Okay, let's look at your setup here. You've got your basically your mock-up image. You have your screen capture and on your desktop or Photoshop, you're going to make sure that you've got your layers panel open. If you can't find that, go into Windows and make sure layers is checked off. So first thing you want to do is make sure that the final image, this part of it, has everything on it that you want. So if you wanted to add another layer or you want to crop it, um, so say I don't really need um, all this at the top, this is going to be on my website, and I'm going to just crop that top off a little. Okay, and then once I have it looking the way I want, I'm going to look at the size. Now, since I know that the final destination of this is going to be on my website, I don't need it 300 pixels, so pixels per inch. So I'm going to click resample, I'm going to scale that down to 72, recheck resample, and then let's look at that in pixels again. So it's slightly smaller because I cropped it. Let's click OK. Okay, and so let's just look at that one more time because it was kind of weird. Okay, so so this is all ready. Let's look at the screen capture. I use a screen capture plug-in for Google Chrome, and it's called Full Page Screen Capture, and it takes you know, really high resolution screen capture here. So let's look at image size. And 2754 is way bigger than we need. It's already 72 DPI, which is good. So I'm just going to click OK. And I'm going to take my move tool and I'm going to drag this in. It's still a little bit big for that screen here. So I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to I'm going to zoom in on this a little. I'm going to make sure that I have this layer that I've just dragged in selected and go to Edit, Transform, and Scale. And holding down the Shift key, I don't want to skew the aspect ratio. Now, this is a little bit bigger than the opening, which is great. Um, I'm going to use my arrow key to kind of nudge that up. Okay, and so I'm going to now apply that transformation. And now I'm going to make that layer invisible for the next step. So with the background selected, there's a couple of ways you could do this. You could do the magic wand. Um, Okay, and so playing with the tolerance, you can see where the magic wand, it, it, depending upon what your tolerance is, you might, the higher it is, you're going to uh, grab more of it than you want. So in playing with this for a minute, I found that the five, tolerance of five, pulls only the inside of this. The other way that you could have done this is to, with the polygon lasso tool, draw a square, but I'm not doing fabulous with uh, fine motor skills these days. So this works really well for me. So now that I've defined the edges here, I'm going to go up to this layer and turn that on and I'm going to click on it and then I'm going to press on this add a layer mask. And so as you can see, this mask has removed the rest of the image below it. The other thing I'm going to do is just unlink these two for the scrolling that's important. Otherwise, you'll notice as you try to make it scroll, it's going to be all over the place. So now I'm going to go back to my move tool because I don't want to cause any damage with the wrong tool. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger and I'm going to go to my window and I'm going to open up the timeline tool. Now there are two types of animation. I have create frame animation. I'm going to click on that. If it's not, if video is chosen, just use the pull down to get create and then click on create frame. 
and it's very small here. Let's see if I can figure out how to make this bigger. So I think let me pull this up so that you could see what I'm seeing. So this is off the off the screen here. So to make this bigger, we're going to go down to. Oh, it still falls off. There's something called panel options, and I want my thumbnails to be bigger. Okay, that's negligibly bigger, but good enough. So I'm going to use this here to duplicate the frame. Now I have two. The first one I definitely want to be the top of the site, and the second one I want them to be the bottom of the site. So make sure that you have the inside image that you had pasted in, the layer thumbnail, is selected, and then your grabber is uh, your move tool selected and then holding down your shift then you would click and pull this up okay and then wherever you're the bottom of your site okay and then you check you have your first frame and you have your last frame so the next thing is to think about it. Now you can create the animation to go from the top to the bottom and then have it infinitely loop. Or what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another, I'm going to duplicate that first. So you have first frame, first frame, last frame. And I'm going to take the second first frame and I'm going to move that over. I'm going to change the timing on all of these to one second. Actually, do one second, one second. So I'm going to tween these two by clicking on the two, and this will create the animation between them. It's called tweening. You're going to want at least 20, anywhere between 20 and 30 to make a smooth scroll. The other thing that will determine the speed would be how many seconds or tenths of a second that you want to make this. So keep in mind when you tween, if these two are different numbers, it, the tweening will happen at the speed of the first thumbnail. So we're going to click OK. And then I'm going to scroll all the way to the end. And actually, I should probably just show you. If you click on any of these, you can see how it's going up. And we're going to look at it in a moment because you can preview this. But I'm going to go all the way to the end because the last two will be the, the bottom one and then the top one. So these were the second and third. So I'm going to just make this two seconds and you'll see in a minute. I want to, to scroll back up a little bit slower. And selecting the two. I'm going to choose tween again, and I'm going to have the same frame rate, same frame numbers. Okay, so then going back to the beginning, I do want it to stop for two seconds when it gets to the top. So let's watch the animation. It's hesitated for two seconds. It's going down, and then it's going up. and then it waits, and then it begins again. So, like I said, totally easy. I'm gonna stop the preview. If there's anything that you don't like about the preview, honestly, you're gonna to have to either go into your history and delete. Um, I found that with frame animations, you've gotta start from the drawing board. The other things that can get you down is if you realize, oh, I want this to be square, or I want, to add something to underneath it. The, once this animation is in place, I found if you try to change the shape or add something to it, um, it kind of skews it. So, for example, I had done um, one and I wanted it square. So what I did was all of this, the whole background 
the bottom here to make that square 1600 by 1600. And in this case, I created the animation exactly how you saw, but because I made this for Instagram, I exported it, rendering it to video. And I'll show you now the last step being to export this. So go to export, file and export, save for web, web and legacy. And this part will take a little while, depending upon how big it is, how many layers are in it. You need a good amount of RAM. It's a good idea if you don't have a lot of RAM on your machine to close anything that you're not using. So here you want to make sure in the pull down that GIF is selected and that 128 colors is selected. And you can change the image size to make it smaller here, either by the size or percentage. And you could see, I mean, seven megabytes is pretty darn big. Um, I'm going to save this and I'm going to call it, this is Casa de Nono. Com, and we're going to save that in the animations and you'll see it's working 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 now if I wanted to put this on Facebook as a video or as a you know I, I think it takes animated gifts but if I wanted to put this on Instagram you can go again to export and because it is layers render video will show up as an option. So render video is not an option on everything, but it is on what we've just done. And so here is where in the next screen where you can choose to change the name, the size, the quality, and click render, and then walk away. Prepare for that to be a while depending upon you know how big this is supposed to be. So anyway, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Good luck. Take care.